years of practice. Ladies and gentlemen, in 2010, the UK government announced eight new sites for nuclear reactors. One of those sites was Hinkley Point in Somerset. And the idea was to build a nuclear power station with two EPR type reactors. That stands for European Pressurised Reactor. And I won't go into it in any great depth except to tell you that this is um, a nuclear reactor design that's quite troubled. The funding was to come partly from the UK government, partly from EDF, the French energy company and partly from China, a third of the funding from China. And until relatively recently, the cost of this enterprise was estimated to be £17 billion. And when completed, the Hinkley Point reactor was supposed to supply 7% of British energy. Now a revised estimate has come out for the cost of Hinkley Point, and it is being suggested that the total lifetime cost of the reactor could be as high as £37 billion. These are UK government statistics. I find that an absolutely shocking amount. Now, the government has been at pains to point out that this increase in the total lifetime cost isn't to do with an increase in the construction price. It's because the wholesale price of electricity has fallen. Now I found this a little bit difficult to understand, but it's basically I think because the UK government is guaranteeing a price for the electricity that will be produced by Hinkley Point. So the government basically makes up the difference if the wholesale cost of electricity falls, the government is going to have to make up more of the difference and thus the cost to the government will be greater. That's how I understand it. Anyway, so this is one problem of the proposal for Hinkley Point is the enormous um, whole life cost. There are other problems. First of all, EDF itself is a company that is in debt, that is struggling with very significant delays in building another nuclear power plant in Flamanville in France. And EDF actually found it difficult to persuade its own board members to support the Hinkley Point project. So, one of the main partners in the Hinkley Point proposal is beset with problems. And to add to all that, it seems that the Chinese investors are becoming more and more nervous about Hinkley Point and they are demanding more and more concessions from EDF. For example, they would like to see more Chinese project managers appointed. So there's a whole litany of problems. However, Hinkley Point is a project that was championed by uh, George Osborne. He lobbied very hard for Chinese involvement. And it looks as though the government isn't prepared yet to accept defeat, if you like, and accept that it's a bad project. Uh, the Department of Energy and Climate Change, the DECC, has said that this 37 billion cost wouldn't affect consumers' bills, for example. But it's hard to see where else the money is going from, um, coming from. It'll have to be covered somehow, presumably by the taxpayers. But they're saying it won't have a direct impact on consumers' bills. And indeed, they are supported in that by EDF, because EDF is saying that the 37 billion figure should be disregarded they say that Hinkley Point will provide reliable, low carbon energy and that it will be competitive with other forms of low carbon energy. And in any case, they say consumers won't pay a penny until the power plant begins operations. 
Personally, I think that EDF and the British government are flogging a dead horse with this one. I think they should give up on it and turn their attentions elsewhere to um, a form of energy that will be less expensive. And now, uh, the French trade unions would like to see a final decision postponed. They want to try and convince the EDF chief executive to ditch the project because of the uncertain climate caused by Brexit. So there are question marks now hanging over the whole Hinkley Point project. Um, it's very uncertain whether it's going to go ahead at all and even if it does, whether it's a good idea. Now there was a time when I used to think that even though I didn't like um, some of the environmental effects of nuclear power, for example the whole problem of waste disposal, nuclear was the only way really to bridge the gap between fossil fuels which were running out and bringing renewables online quickly enough to generate all the power we need. So although instinctively averse to nuclear power, I thought it was the only realistic stopgap solution. Now I'm not sure that's the case anymore, because although nuclear is reliable and it's not intermittent and it's low carbon, the cost is just becoming completely uneconomical. It's inconceivable to me, I think, to spend £37 billion on a nuclear power plant, plus potentially the cost of decommissioning this power plant when it reaches the end of its life, which could cost another £22 billion. And the reality is that actually we have no idea how to de decommission a nuclear power plant. We talk about it a lot, but nobody's actually done it completely and stopped a nuclear power plant, cleaned it up, got rid of the waste in a way that's sustainable or, or at least not dangerous. We don't even know what we're doing and it's vastly expensive. So I'm not sure anymore that nuclear is the answer, which begs the question really, what is the answer to bridge the gap? And I only hope that it is not fracking.